1830, Petro Grigorenko was one of the many students brought in from the cities to harvest the grain. There was rebellion, then sabotage. People did not give up. They attacked the local authorities, usually not killing anyone. They only tied them up and threw them into a barn or simply drove them from the village. And they took back their property, took back their horses, cows, and implements, which had just been taken by the collective. They would take all that back. To crush the rebellions, troops were sent in. They would shoot over the people's heads, but they would also shoot at their heads and their hearts. Vasily Sokio witnessed a squad of GPU secret police attacking a lone, defiant farmer. They formed a wide circle around the house. When they realized that the farmer inside had no more bullets left, they threw a grenade into the attic. After that, everything fell silent. The fact that armed resistance burned itself into my memory. I saw that even under those terrible conditions, there were people who believed in fighting for the right to live as the Ukrainian farmer had always lived. The wheat is left standing in the fields. The demoralized farmers respond to the ruinous taxes and the presence of troops by simply refusing to work. The grain quotas or taxes are deliberately raised to exceed what the individual farmers can possibly produce. Either they join the collective where the taxes are three times lower or face exile as kulaks. By mid-1932, three-quarters of all Ukrainian farms are collectivized. Then, in August, crippling new quotas are levied on the collectives themselves. Another exorbitant quota is levied in October, and yet another at the beginning of the new year. These levies are impossible to meet. The working people were getting rationing card, and they could get uh, food from the warehouse in the village like one liter of milk and two pounds of bread for a week. But the farmers, the peasants, they could not get anything any place. And so they start, they had nothing to eat right away the second day after those uh, people from government took everything from them. The regime blames the farmers for the stringent food rationing in the cities. In reality, the Soviets are dumping tons of wheat on Western markets. The 1932 harvest yields enough grain to have fed the entire population of Ukraine for two years. Instead, famine ravages the country. It was a spoken order. Stalin gave it. That there was a definite plan, I knew from the instructions given us by Stanislav Kosyar, the secretary of the Communist Party of Ukraine. He said, the Kulak wants to crush our Soviet government with the bony hand of famine. We will bend this bony hand back on the throat of the Kulak. The Russians came from house to house and took all the foods that people had in the house, starting with grain, flour, wheat, or, or what, barley, or whatever they had, up to the last drop of the food. They took the beets, the beans, potatoes, whatever they had in cellars or in the house. And uh, beside that, they didn't trust them. They started searching the houses looking all over, digging in the house and holes in the floors, digging in the ovens, ruining their ovens. And so they went from house to house and took everything from peasants. 